I don't do this often, but man, you know, I was just fishing around. I mean, I am wiped out. I just want to go to bed. But one last video for you. <clears throat> Is national strategy. You know, Salisbury used to say that if it were up to his generals and admirals, they would garrison everything between the planet Earth and the moon on the assumption that there was a threat up there on the moon. I think Salisbury was right. And we have the same problem now. Every time you turn around, new threats are emerging. Uh, anybody who knows anything about China, its long history, knows that this is not a martial culture. This is not a state bent on expansionism. Quite the contrary. China has many problems. We have many problems. There are many things they do we don't like. Uh, all of that is true, but there is no real justification for armed conflict with China. And the whole Taiwan business is grossly, grossly blown out of all proportion to reality. First of all, you as, as British people know damn well how hard it is just to cross 20 or 30 miles of open water. Imagine trying to cross 100 and seize Taiwan. And that, of course, presumes that anybody wants to do it. And why would they? Because they have two parties on Taiwan, one of which is the KMT and the other is this national party that is really aligned with Japan and the KMT is aligned with Beijing. Well, I think the KMT is now winning. They just had parliamentary elections. They're roaring back into power because the people in Taiwan don't want a war. And the KMT is an advocate for reunification with China. And I think that will probably happen on its own. And it's not, we keep depicting China as this evil totalitarian state. What we don't understand is that the model for all Chinese, whether they live in Taiwan or on the continent, is of course we don't have to worry about that because i honestly think that biden's in the back pocket <laughs> of china but anyway I, I i wasn't trying to go i went a little bit too far back in this video but i want you to hear what he says to say about russia so we're coming up on that uh but yeah i i the u.s congress they're and biden they're all bought out by china we're we're not going to go to war with china but I mean, China's allying with Russia. We'll see. I mean, the globalists are in charge. I mean, you know, we'll see. I mean, it's not the U.S. government that's in charge. It's the globalist. Dang, got it. Come on. Singapore. <clears throat> they all want to live in something much like Singapore. Well, personally, I would be horrified to live in Singapore. But I'm not Chinese. My culture is uh, different. My way of thinking is different. My historical experience is different. But the Chinese like the Singapore model. If more people understood that, then they would understand why there is no real reason for war with China. Russia is another entirely different animal. But how much do we really know about Russia, let alone Ukraine? I grew up with Ukrainians. I know them well. I love them. They're wonderful people. They have been weaponized by the United States and London uh, to become a threat to Russia. Uh, if we had not done that, this war would not currently be underway. The average Ukrainian was not hot to go to war with Russia. People forget that Mr. Zelensky, who was picked by various oligarchs to win the election, actually ran on a platform of a negotiating agreement with Russia to end all further fighting. And he was overwhelmingly elected, even in the western part of Ukraine, where he had very little su support, because Ukrainians weren't interested in this war. So we once again have subverted the natural process and we brought on this war that is doing enormous damage, not just to Ukraine, but to Europe and by implication, long term, to Great Britain and us, all of which is unnecessary. We don't live in 1900. We live in 2022, soon to be 2023. Our commercial interests and Russia's are not that different. Uh, so this doesn't have to happen. But Again, we have a small, well-financed minority in charge, and no one will admit that this was a terrible mistake. But we're going to see in the next few weeks massive offenses by the Russians to end this war. And it's going to have a terrible impact on Ukraine. I don't know that millions of Ukrainians will... Yeah, and that's what I've been telling you. I mean, the mobilization that's taking place in Russia is just monstrous. I mean, they, 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 this is all out war for them. Um, not for the Western nations. I mean, they, you know, we've got these globalist elites in charge and um, they have no clue <laughs> what's coming. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry. 
I'm sorry the Ukrainians are going to suffer so tremendously. Um, but anyway, let's just... Con this is, by the way, this is uh, Colonel McGregor. If you want to find him, he's on YouTube and uh, also on Rumble. Uh, probably one of the smartest... I mean, uh, God knows, if he was in charge of our military... Uh, or had any influence over uh, what was taking place with the Biden administration, we'd, we'd be Stalin. I mean, you know, this country would be, uh, and I, I hope that whatever Republican gets elected, hopefully in 2024, will hire this guy to be the Secretary of Defense. Uh, I, I've, I've watched him speak. I've watched, I've listened to him for, for months now. Uh, I mean, he is probably the greatest military strategist the 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 greatest military mind that i have ever seen uh or listened to and uh what what here let's just let you listen to him just a little more i mean i i i worship the guy it's kind of like general flynn i mean if we had general flynn and mcgregor uh in charge of our military i dare say we could uh we could take on the whole world but anyway let's just listen thank god or come home again and what remains will be wounded for decades. And all of that because we decided we wanted a war with Russia that we were convinced would harm Russia. And ultimately, Russia has not been harmed. Well, I was at the Royal College of Defense Studies as, uh, as a student there. Um, obviously, we trained to think strategically as far as possible uh, that we can. Um, Incidentally, can I just uh, ask you something which I find quite amusing? When I was at Sandhurst, uh, we were given uh, a definition of the difference between uh, tactics and strategy. Uh, and uh, I think it was attributed to an American general. It might have been Patton. It's a little bit out of date now, but it still tells a story uh, which I've never found a, a better way of, uh, of suggesting it to anybody, uh, a young student, for example. Uh, that is, uh, it's a little bit out of date, but uh, bear with me if you will. It's um, uh, strategy is how you get a young lady uh, to come to the cinema with you. And All right, right. Yeah, I don't know where this is going at that point. Anyway, what, what McGregor's pointing out, because uh, I wanted to tell you, is that, you know, there was no need for this war. I mean, and, and, and why in the world we're wasting money on the other side of the world? It's just a few global elites that, that felt like, you know, if we're, uh, we're going to punish Russia. But what we've done is actually we've brought out the, uh, the bear. I mean, you know, it's, their war economy is thriving right now. And um, I guess I'm just going to go to bed at this point. But I just wanted you to listen to Colonel McGregor. And if you want to search him out on YouTube... Uh, definitely check him out. I mean, the, the guy is just amazing in his analysis. And, you know, that's where I get a lot of my videos from is I just watch him. I mean, uh, God knows if we could just get Millie out or Austin and put McGregor in there, <laughs> we, we'd be uh, we'd be good. Peace out. Stay free. And uh, it's good, good, good to live in the free state of Florida. And uh, I'm done for the day.